Earth is still special. Europa is the most likely place to find life in our solar system today because we think there's a liquid water ocean beneath its surface. Now we know that on Earth, everywhere that there's water, we find life. So could Europa have the ingredients to support life? In other words, the chemical requirements for life are common. We are not alone. How much longer before a new discovery shouts it out? T minus five, four, three, two, one. Hit the button, baby. Party dance time. The word star, man, it's an illusion. Stay cool. Thor News is for winners, and that's why you're here. So stick around. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents. All right, we are over at the Data Galaxy again, and astrobiologists are shifting their search for alien life to the oceans. Wait, what the hell, man? Like, where were you guys looking before? In the core? Above the poles? Under big rocks? In caves? In the soil? I mean, wouldn't you think to look in the oceans in the first place? Because an ocean is a dynamic, extremely complex system within itself. And so, if you got an ocean, you're bound to have tons of life. So, which genius just now figured out, hey, I got an idea. Let's look at all that ocean water. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> Whatever, man. The salt levels of oceans on distant Earth-like planets could have a major effect on their climates. What? Why are we talking about climate? One sentence in. I thought we were talking about looking for life in oceans. Oh, God. I got bait and switched, bitches. According to new research from the Center for the Ocean and Atmospheric Sciences at the University of East Anglia, the research published today reveals that the circulation in extremely salty or freshwater extraterrestrial seas would influence their temperatures. Oh, really? And could, in fact, make for more habitable conditions for alien life. Wait, let me get this straight. More habitable conditions for alien life make for more habitable conditions for alien life. Like, you got a better chance of finding life in the ocean than you do in a planet's magma core. This is genius stuff. Really, who came up with this? God, the Nobel Prize race is deep and thick this year. Until recently, computer simulations of habitable climates on Earth-like planets have mainly focused on their atmospheres. No shit, but studying their oceans is vital for understanding climate stability and habitability. Wait, so it's kind of like on Earth. They're only studying the carbon. They're not really studying the oceans, maybe? I don't know. That could be a reach. As on our own Earth. I fucked that up. But until now, researchers had not considered that the seas on distant Earth-like planets might not quite be like ours. What the hell? What kind of dumb shit is this? Until now, researchers had not considered that the seas on distant Earth-like planets might not be quite like ours. What does that mean? That's double negative, first of all. So, like, let's cross out the knots. Researchers had considered that the seas on distant Earth-like planets might be like ours. I'm so confused. So, they're saying that oceans are or aren't like ours. So, wait, wait. These scientists are saying oceans on other worlds might be significantly more or less salty than the oceans of Earth. Oh, my God. This is brilliant science. Holy shit. Like, if I'm guessing about other planets and other solar systems, I'm going to say, yeah, maybe the oceans on a world... 100 light years away might be a little different. Maybe it's a little saltier. Maybe it's less saltier. Who knows, man? I don't know. Are you serious? Am I reading this? This is crazy. It's like lately everybody keeps giving me a bunch of crazy bullshit that even if I was in like the craziest of moods, super gullible, and on some weird make you believe stuff drug, I still wouldn't believe this shit people are spooning me. You know what I'm saying? The number of planets being discovered outside our solar system is rapidly increasing said David Stevens, from UEA's School of Mathematics. Our research helps to answer whether or not these planets could sustain alien life. <sighs> the planet can either sustain alien life or it can't. Man, I don't know what your supercomputer's got to do with anything. You know what I'm saying? We think that many planets may be uninhabitable because they are either too close to or too far away from their sun. Huh? I guarantee you, if you had a god like mine and could see every planet in the universe, you would see that there is a wide variety of planets 
and life and the conditions on which they live under. I promise you. But what do I know, man? A planet's habitable zone is based on its distance from the sun and temperatures at which it is possible for the planet to have liquid water. What if the atmosphere is kind of different, the clouds kind of different, and the soil is kind of different, and then the stuff they use as water is kind of different? You ever envisioned a scenario like that? And besides, like, let's say you find a planet 50 gazillion light years away, and you thought it had the building blocks of life on it. What would you do? You know? All right. Oceans play a vital role in sustaining life and also have an immense capacity to control climate. Oh, really? What about the star? Does the star have any capacity to control the climate of that planet? But previous studies on ocean circulation on other planets have made the assumption that fundamental ocean properties, such as salinity and the depth of the water, would be similar to that on Earth. We wanted to find out what might be happening on other planets which might appear superficially similar to Earth, but where conditions such as salinity are radically different to our own planet. Yeah. The research team used computer models of ocean circulation on exoplanets to see what would happen when their oceans had different salinity levels to Earth. What? I'm going to ask my computer, Hey, computer, what does salt water taste like? They considered oceans with very low salinity, similar to freshwater. Salinity similar to the average value of Earth's oceans, and a high salinity, similar levels to the Dead Sea. On Earth, on Earth we have a circulation, where warm water moves towards the poles at the surface, before being cooled. And second, at high latitudes, and traveling through the equator at depth, says Manoj Joshi, from UEA's School of Environmental Sciences. Our research shows that the oceans on other planets with a much higher salinity could circulate in the opposite direction, with polar water flowing toward the equator at the surface, sinking in the tropics, and traveling back toward the poles at depth. All right, I don't even know what that meant. I'm not visualizing it, but whoop-de-doo. We also found a similar pattern emerging for freshwater oceans. These circulation patterns are the opposite of what happens on Earth, and would result in a dramatic warming in the polar regions. Such a circulation scenario might extend the planet's range of ability. You're saying, if it has a different water makeup, then the conditions under which life might exist are different? <sighs> Revolutionary. Of course, on any given exoplanet, many other properties are likely to differ from their Earth-like values. Well, no duh! Some of which may also have a significant influence on ocean circulation, such as tidal forces, planetary rotation, ocean depth, and the location of continents. Adds Jody Cullum from the UEA's School of Mathematics. But this is important work, which will help us better understand the habitability of distant planets in more accurate detail than ever before. All right, I'm sorry. If you felt like I wasted your time with this article, then I apologize. All right, God bless everyone. Crappy stories all about.